Hey, how's it going? Hi. Welcome back to Half History, episode two. Uh, we are on the train and we're rolling, trying to get into the schedule, so look out for us every Friday. Once we get more into the swing of things, you can uh, be on the lookout for us and we'll keep you posted where to find us and interact with us. Uh, hopefully in the future, I was thinking it'd be cool if there's audience submissions of stories you want to hear and yeah so i feel like the best history stories are like stories that your grandpa usually tells you over and over again every year like the um what do you call them call the uh like the myths or yeah there's like words for it um like conspiracy theories? aphorisms no just um just like like the stories that get passed down there's yeah rather yeah. than um uh man i'm just blanking on the words but no worries i think we all kind of have a general idea of what it is but it's like it's like for example you hear of of like la llorona the stories and all of that but when you hear it from your relatives over there like the stories that they've heard and what they've seen or experienced that's spooky yeah i think that's more scary you get the first-hand experience and then the um just the passed down over generations also type of stories yeah no you want to be really scared when it's uh when it's like really late out like 3 a.m which is like the witching hour and if like a bunch of bogs sorry (laughs) dogs start barking around you that usually means there's like bad juju happening Mm. like if they're all spooked you know like what are they all spooked about what are you doing out so late well at our house in mexico um we had an outhouse to poop (laughs) yes and pee but uh we we would have to go out there if we needed to use the bathroom (laughs) so it would be really scary ah yeah well i mean dogs bark See, I'm just not superstitious, so my, my first instinct is just to just be like, nah. Yeah, no, there is a lot of superstition over there, but it it's a different thing when you're experiencing it. Like, I, I could imagine now you're like, you know, it's just a whatever, there's just, there could be dogs barking. But when you're up that late and it's really like, you don't hear a commotion outside, but there's a bunch of animals like crying and howling. And it's late and cold, like, you're probably, ooh, this is really scary. Right, but, I, but yeah. And then on top of that, we have, like, it's really, really long. Like, our backyard is, is like, the end of it is a wall. Hmm. And it's uh, kind of covered by, like, a, a half, like, a hut, kind of. Right. I'm not entirely sure what to call it, but. A um, canopy? Yeah, like a canopy. We kept, like, uh, chickens and stuff and like storage over there but at night it was pitch black Mm. like you couldn't see the end of it so it'd be extra scary because sometimes you'd be like oh my god there could be something over there like you can you can only you you imagine a monster over there and yeah you just start getting like psyching yourself out you're like oh no imagination runs wild yes i kind of like that feeling though you're like kind of spooked right i keep bonking the, the microphone i'm so sorry we're um yeah, we're working on our um, etiquette etiquette over here and Podcast our etiquette. production. Speaking of which, skills. I'm going to drink water and I'm insanely loud. So, Give right, she decided to get ice because she had to have an extra cold. <laughs> uh, but that's all right. We um, so I also just wanted to point out in the intro, we kind of jumped right into it. But um, if there's anything you'd like to uh, have us dive into and maybe do it uh another topic for another show you can reach out at half history pod at gmail.com so anywhere you uh you want to reach us um on social media half history or half history pod on twitter so um yeah enough of that and if any of my family members that are watching also want to submit a story i would love to hear them yeah so we yeah i'd love to do something like that and um just do a story based on something that we kind of is more familiar. Um, but for for this week, 
um, our first episode we did about, um, what do you call it, torture. So that was a little bit grim and gruesome. Um, the We originally planned to do that around Halloween time, so... A bit delayed. Yeah, a bit delayed. Uh, so... But no less interesting. Right, and I um, wanted to release it on um, Thanksgiving Day, on Thursday. But we're going to try and go with Friday releases for um, moving forward. And today, um, with my topic, I chose to do on kind of a more of a Thanksgiving theme. Mm-hmm. Uh, so um, I kind of started doing a lot of research and didn't get, um, I wasn't able to get the full picture so i might kind of do uh multiple installments over the years or um just kind of get into it at a later point if maybe we uh, are able to touch back to the the story of the first thanksgiving um so the first thanksgiving uh isn't actually kind of what we're going to be talking about because that's a uh, different event. Some people say it was their this harvest feast of 1621. Um, but where I started was the uh, the Mayflower ship. Oh. So. What is the Mayflower ship, babe? The Mayflower, the Mayflower ship is uh, one of the first ships, uh, one of the most famous ships that um, was related to the first colonists of America coming from England over the Atlantic Ocean to America. So uh, this was back in 1620 and that kind of, I can't imagine how scary that would be because, you know, once you go, there's no going back. Mm -mm. You're basically just starting an entirely new life. It's like kind of like going to Mars. On a ship too. Like on a boat. Yeah. Yeah, like a big old ship. Right. (laughs) I just... I felt like I was wrong because you were just looking at me. No, it's okay. I'm just a little bit nervous. No, it's okay. Um, but We got this. Yeah. Mm. So, when... Um, so, yeah, we're going to be talking about the Mayflower. Mm-hmm. The, my first question to open it up is going to be um, about the time period of the Mayflower. So, when did the Mayflower set sail? We have three options. The first one's going to be 1492. Uh, then the second one is 1620, and then the third option is going to be 1776. So there's three options. Uh, I'm going to have to go with 16... What was it? 20. 1620. Right. Uh, so I chose a couple of dates there that to throw people off. 1492, as we know, is the when Columbus sailed over and first discovered the Americas. I wonder what that would have felt like. It's crazy. I mean, he thought he was in India. That's oh, why. Yeah. oh, Lord. That's why the natives are called Indians. Oh. And, um, but yeah, so he, they, the, um, the Spanish people, I think he was Spanish or Italian, Christopher Columbus, um, colonized South America. But we're talking about, um, some North American colonists. Okay. Um, so... Mayflower is actually pretty interesting. It sets sail f- from Southampton, England for North America on August 15th, 1620. The ship carried pilgrims from England to Plymouth in modern-day Massachusetts, where they established the first permanent European settlement in 1620. Oh, my God. So the first per- permanent European settlement in America. So there uh, actually was... Um, there was another... Settlement uh, previous, Jamestown, which was founded in 1607. Most of its settlers actually died. I think I think I know about that from Pocahontas. It's pretty famous. I remember because uh, he was like, I'm going to name it Jamestown, I think. Yeah. I hope so. And, and yeah, so that, that one uh, was pretty famous. That one uh, was founded in 1607. Mm-hmm. Most of the settlers died within the first year. That's so scary. 440 of the 500 new arrivals died of starvation during the first six months of winter. Do you think they knew that that was like one of the risks of settling somewhere? 
Because because I could imagine everyone kind of tells them like, oh, it's going to be amazing. We're going to go to this new land where there's like all this cool stuff. Let's go, guys. Let's build a, a new life. You know, it, I, I think it's the same problem that you can you would imagine today. Like if if this type of thing were to happen, like you can't be prepared to um, to for such a, a drastic change. Mm-mm. um they especially then not, not um especially the winter mm-hmm. because the the having to face the winter in the wild Mm-mm. must have been a crazy um and just like you know horrifying thing to experience just, just with the cold alone and then the lack of food so and on top of that just like these flimsy ass buildings sorry these really fit like flimsy buildings that i mean they're sturdy and everything but they're not as advanced as as our housing it's like they're not insulated usually or they might have been sometimes they did like they would put like hay and stuff in the middle i think but that's just insane yeah well in 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 this area they um you know the probably the best type of buildings they had would be just like log cabin type of of buildings just small yeah. kind of one bedroom or um you know studio style houses and not just that like they had to use fur and stuff for for blankets i could imagine it could be cozy but if you suck at selling dude you're you're effed <laughs> yeah well just in anything like there's so much skill involved in um survival in the wild mm-hmm. um they probably um just were barely surviving with you know tents at first yeah um just every step of the way um is yeah i couldn't imagine that kind of challenge so the you know everyone died of jamestown <laughs> you know everyone died <laughs> starvation it was that's what it was it was starvation yeah and we're gonna actually find out in this story that the the mayflower settlers pretty much were going to almost certainly dar- uh, die of starvation if it wasn't for the the kindness of the the native people uh there were some famous indians squanto is one of them um that actually we're, squanto. so that's actually once they get over to you know america but um i didn't get you know all uh very too far into the 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 story might be a little bit of a short episode and um you know depending on the circumstances i might you know do a little more research and come back with a a part two we can always uh google along the way as well do you want me to set up my laptop so i can google away nah it's all good if uh so this is going to be coming out december 2nd and um you know we'll have some time to um you know beef it up if if uh if that's going to be the case uh but (laughs) So the reason that these people were leaving mm-hmm. uh, Europe uh, is because in uh, in Holland the the pilgrims were well, originally from Holland. It was life was becoming increasingly difficult. The king of England, I believe, King um, James the first, formed an alliance with Holland against Spain and outlawed independent church corrugations. So. What does that mean? Independent church corrugations. So they, so um, King James was he? He, I believe, created. Um, uh, I wish I did a little more research on King James, but he, I think, was trying to separate from the Catholic Church. So okay. he was trying to do his own thing. Sounds about right. They were all like, uh, "We're this religion now." Right, but at they the same throne, and they're like, "No, now we're this religion." Right, but at the same time, he was trying to create his own, you know, religion and make it mm-hmm. kind of the new thing. Yeah, so course. he he was, you know, forming an alliance with Holland to outlaw independent churches. So, just kind of smaller churches. Mm-hmm. There's like you know just maybe if your whole family is has their their own independent faith you know okay. what I mean okay so it's just like um, small churches basically they're outlawed so they're Sm- by small churches do you mean I'm sorry like um, like small town churches like where just a small group of people if they're from like a certain religion have like a certain a specific church to go to well I believe it it comes down to like once people stopped um following the the 
Catholic faith, mm-hmm. uh, a bunch of new religions popped up, like a bunch of small different ones. Right. Um, so like, you know how today there's uh, Baptist, there's... Um, there's so many. Baptist, yeah, Methodist, Lutheran, Church, Methodist, Lutheran, all kinds of, um, all kinds of different Satanist. faiths that are all kind of Christian. Right, but mm-hmm. they just have kind of a different interpretation. Right. So all these kind of little um, faiths were popping up, these little churches, mm-hmm. and um, they're like, oh, "We don't like that." Right. <laughs> oh, King, we don't like you guys being independent. King James wanted his church to be the the only one, basically. So. <laughs> that's good. It's so sassy, but that's also really messed up to be like, "You guys can do your own thing. You have to follow me. I got the swagger." Yeah. Like, I mean, this church is hot. He also was a pretty horrible guy. I believe he um, he was a guy who killed his wives. That's him. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And then, oh my god, and I've then, seen so many history documentaries on his. I think that's why he started the religion, just so that he could get divorced. Right. No, I remember it was right. tearing the church apart. Everyone's like, "No, you can't do that." And they're like, "Uh, no, she's fucking his like brother." Right. I think they were saying that she was having relations with her sibling or something Mm. or a relative, something related to that. And he was, I don't know if that was the case, but I wasn't there. But Mm. um, yeah, no, he was like, no, I want this other girl. Uh, I'm getting divorced. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That um, was pretty crazy back then. And I think Mm -hmm. it's pretty crazy now to, to, um, I mean, getting divorced once, you know, twice i guess but Mm -hmm. just this guy having multiple wives it's like dude you gotta you have a you you're the problem there's a common problem here and it's you you know so yes um he he had he had some issues that he had to figure it out um but that's pretty much the reason why the pilgrims left and why a lot of people uh colonized america was because Mm -hmm. they there was no more room for them left in uh, europe they're being pushed out because their religion was no longer accepted. That's so sad. So that's why a big part of America's, um, what do you call it, Bill of Rights, our con- our Constitution? Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's the um, the Constitution. Yeah, it is. Is the uh, the right to unconstitutional? It's unconstitutional. No, oh, yeah, that's I just that's how I remember. Everyone always says that. I don't know. I don't have it memorized. Yeah. Anyway, um, I failed, the, uh, I failed uh, history. But yeah, that's why um, freedom of religion is such a big part of America's um, rights. Is because there are so much problems with religion being um, forced upon people, mm-hmm. and um, you know, you're kind of seeing that t- again today. There's kind of people that are forgetting, like, oh yeah, like the reason kind of one of the reasons why america's here is so that people don't have to be forced to practice any one religion no. so, but freedom freedom so freedom. yeah going to america was super risky like um when i was touching on the jamestown uh people how they all died they you know um yeah i'm i'm looking at i'm just reading here and i'm trying to no it's okay Someone, cut up. Uh, the quote here I have is uh, they, I don't know who they is, but um, one of the quotes I have here says, we, we verily believe and trust the Lord is with us, they wrote, and that he, he will graciously prosper in our endeavors according to the simplicity of our hearts therein. It was therefore considered the destiny of the pilgrims and Puritans to simply build a spiritual Jerusalem in America. So they thought... <laughs> basically like there it was it was their purpose god said go to hell <laughs> he killed them all what oh no this, the this, this wait the, oh sorry is that a different one no this, so this yeah um, is that jamestown jamestown people died but yeah um i'm sure they did it for religious reasons but they specifically in this quote is referring to the pilgrims that uh, okay. i'm talking about which is about 13 14 years later oh okay never mind yeah so. i hope i hope they went a little bit better yeah <laughs> i'm just gonna take a quick sip of water whoop, whoop. I must have been... <clears throat> do 
just so scary because you don't know what the conditions are going to be like day to day you know like there were some places in where well just like if you're going to a new land or land yeah imagine going to alaska right now just with nothing Oy. oh heck no. and i mean today we have technology mm-hmm. all kinds of um you know technology they had literally nothing so google google they had some you know some food some animals i believe on the on the ship um but for the most part they yeah, they had nothing they were straight up coming over with the clothes on their back um you know never showered oh god ew right they all stunk yeah so well, i wonder how much food they also had to carry and like fresh water to to survive like how many like they would probably put them in barrels, right? Water? Back in the day. No, well, maybe, but they, like meat products, like day-to-day food, rations. They brought live animals. Oh, no. Right? There was no meat. There was no storage of uh, meat. They brought um, beer. Of because course. Because there was no um, purified water. Yes, they're like, <laughs> we can't drink water, guys. Let's just drink to forget. Yeah, so they had to use distilled you know the water that was um you know in it's gonna alcohol be really gross but their pee must have fucking stuck. yeah Ew. all dehydrated and um yeah it must have been horrible yeah. i wonder i wonder what the bathroom situation situation is like the poop deck the poop deck is that what that is no it's we looked it up i think one time and they poop something about you know poop it's a French. It's it's from France. Can I Google the bathroom situation? And you could keep going? Yeah. For sure. For sure. I mean, that'd be great. Um, but so they they basically believed that it was their purpose. You know, they said the we verily believe and trust the Lord is with us. They they thought that they were going to build a spiritual Jerusalem in their world, in their words. Um, they wanted to create kind of carve out um a future for their for their faith for their people for their um you know for the future so Mm -hmm. the that was their goal um their families were separated william bradford describes william bradford is one of the people on the mayflower and he became a leader in the town of plymouth Mm -hmm. i believe Families were separated. Uh, truly doleful was the sight of that sad and mournful parting. Oh. To see what sighs and sobs and prayers did sound among them. What tears did gush from every eye and pithy speeches pierced each heart. Their reverend pastor falling down on his knees and they all with him. So. This guy's poetic. <laughs> Yeah, I will. Yeah, like, <laughs> he was like a leader guy, so he, he must have been, you know, a little, really like some some sort of like you know, right? Smart, no, inspired. And back then, like the way that they used to speak was so eloquent, like uh, everything sounded so fancy. <clears throat> there weren't like specific words for certain things, so they just had to be really specific too. Probably like not a tear or not an eye in the area was was left un. Like what, or no, <laughs> no dry, you know. Right. Yeah. Like uh, what tears did it? gush from every eye? Exactly. What tears did gush from every eye? And then what else? I want to see what sighs and sobs and prayers did sound among them. <laughs> yeah, he he was basically just describing families were separated. This guy was definitely married. Too. Sometimes, so people, it, this guy. Yeah, imagine he was like <laughs> he had a, dearest. He had a lady. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Imagine back then, like. Some saucy dude just writes you this such a poetic letter, like, My dearest, I turned thy face while you walked past, and the smell of daisies just became stronger, and flowers seemed to bloom that much faster. You know, like, Mm -hmm. something like that, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, though, he he definitely has a way with words. Oh, yeah. I can imagine. Also, I looked up how they use the bathroom in the Mayflower. All right. What's the word? Uh, get, ooh. Oh, my God. Um, most of the mes- men would be going to the bathroom at the head, 
which was at the very tip of the bow, so the forecastle wasn't very clean. Uh, there were also officers on Mayflower. They were responsible for sailing and navigating the ship. They probably lived in the space between the master and the common sailors. Oh, that part was just highlighted for some reason. Mm. But um, they didn't have a bathroom. So they would just have to uh, stick their, their little hineys <laughs> on the side of the boat. Did it say that? Uh, I looked down here. Uh, did the pilgrims have bathrooms? But in the 1600s, no one had bathrooms. Was, ah, where did the passengers sleep on? No. They said that there was a head, which I know historically the head is like, you know, the bathroom. Mm -hmm. the I'm trying to head. look it up. Boat. Were there bathrooms on the... Yeah. Why does the Give Navy a call it a head? Answer. Head is a nautical sense referring to the bow or fore part of the ship. The ship's toilet was typically placed at the head of the ship near the base of the bow spirit where splashing water served to naturally clean the toilet area. Oh hmm. my god. A nautical sense referring to the bow or fore. For us, the front? I think so. The head of the ship the head, the front, ship near the base of the bow sprit. I'm going to look that up now. That's a little confusing. But yeah, I looked it up and it said the pilgrims aboard the Mayflower didn't have a bathroom to run to. So they just pooped on the, literally on the front of the boat, the bow, <laughs> near the bow sprit. The bow sprit's the thing that sticks, the little pointy thing that sticks up. I feel so bad for people that were shy poopers back in the day. I don't think there was such a thing. Oh, man. Like, but I could imagine, like... <sighs> like insomnia? There probably wasn't such a thing as insomnia back then. You're just like... But I could imagine some people probably didn't like like pooping with other people. You know, it can't be pleasant if there's, like, two of you guys just, like, constipated or whatever, just chilling there for a little bit, just like, what's up, man? Would you eat? <laughs> right. I had the grits. Yeah. I had some cheese. Well, you can always use a bucket. Just throw it off. Right. I don't know if they had buckets. I'm sure there was some sort of... I can imagine they had buckets. They had to probably clean the ship somehow. Right. So that's pretty gross. <clears throat> there were also probably rats on the ship. They always somehow snuck in. Yeah. That's pretty gross. Mm -hmm. With disease. Pretty. That they spread to the rest of the world. Pretty crappy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Black and Plague. And is a crappy situation as well because you have to crap. <laughs> at least the Black public. Plague never made it to America. Yeah. And at least um, yeah. nowadays there's, you know, toilets with yeah. partitions around so we don't have to see each other poop. But also I have a complaint. The bathroom stalls in the woman's bathroom is way too wide and sometimes the doors are way too high like if you sit down people would be able to see what kind of chonies you're wearing and i am uncomfortable with that mm. yeah i just wish that they were more private there was one post uh on reddit a while ago that i read and it said the reason that they're so wide is so people can see when you need toilet paper <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> In case, in case they need to help you out. Wait, what? So what do you mean by wide? So, you guys probably don't have this issue because you guys usually only have like one bathroom stall, huh? Um, Kind of. Well, like bathroom stalls, like when you go out to a public restroom. Right. The bathroom stalls, since there's, I mean, in our, the ladies' bathrooms, we don't have urinals. Right. So we just have a bunch of toilets lined up. And a lot of the times the doors are like really high up they're like oh so so you said oh so like, you mean the gap is wide the gap is wide between the doors okay yeah. like sometimes under as well yeah which is super uncomfortable i hella i hella i dude no yeah i know i'm speaking your language i was a little bit confused sorry but i wasn't a little clear i definitely think we need a little bit more um privacy at work yes. people tie toilet paper around the the top and let it hang down so that it covers the gap on the sides oh that's smart yeah do you do that no 
I mean, I don't, I don't, I, I don't care at all. I just, whatever. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta do your business. Yeah, I mean, well, people, like, what are you, what are you looking for? Like, if you're looking, like, what, I mean, whatever, like, I just gotta, I just gotta poop. <laughs> what, I mean, yeah, I mean, if you're looking. <laughs> that's on you, buddy. <laughs> yeah, it's your, it's your business. What are you looking for? That's, hmm. that's also kind of creepy. Wouldn't you also feel concerned if someone was, like... But that's what I'm saying. Like, well, in there. see, the thing is, the bathroom is a very public space. So imagine you're in the bathroom and you see another person like looking over the stall. It's like, oh yeah, what the hell kind of part? Like, I don't know. Yeah, I would probably say something. Yeah, dude. Just for, yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. The weird, the weird situation is when you're like pooping mm. on your, not just in um <laughs> during work hours, and then someone comes in, and um there's maybe only one or two stalls open, and um. They're just kind of like trying to open up the door and they're just kind of barely peeking yeah. through. And it's like, bro, like. <laughs> Come on, leave me alone. You know, I just remembered something. Have you ever had a little kid peek on you? <laughs> Sometimes I've had little kids. Like a mom goes in there with their kids. <laughs> and Sometimes like they'll peek under. And I'm like, hello. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Yeah, I can't. I For can't, free. I can't say specifically, but. I should just go outside and charge the mother like, um, these goodies ain't free, honey. Pay up. Mm. 20 bucks. <laughs> For sure. That's. Mm? That's the child discount. <laughs> A little questionable there, but. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. But, uh, it, it has made me very uncomfortable. And sometimes, a couple of times, I've seen, like, kids peeking through the, the hole in the middle. And I'm just like, hello. Yeah, no, that's definitely something. I should just scare them. I should make, like, a scary face. But then they usually always come back. They're like, oh, hee hee, there's something scary in there. Let me go look again. Hmm, yeah. You know kids. No, just freaking... If you mess with them at all, they're gonna... They're gonna... They're literally gonna have fun with it. Right. And do it all over again just, and over again. Just ignore them. Exactly. <laughs> anyway. All right, back to the Mayflower. Back to it. <laughs> whoop, whoop. That uh, after about after that poetic guy, mm-hmm. um, oh, poetic gentleman, right? And for some reason we were he had maidens back in the day. Let m- me tell you, maidens. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were getting into the the poop situation, mm-hmm. so that was interesting. Yeah. But the they they took a ship to England and then they got on the Mayflower. So they were they were going from they had a layover Holland, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, took a ship to England and from England left uh to america so how big was the mayflower ship hmm. we got three options we have okay. 20 tons okay 80 tons or 180 tons um so just to give you a little background information that was considered a smaller ship okay it was a cargo ship having traveled mainly between england and bordeaux which is just in europe with clothing and wine, it was not an ocean ship. Okay, well, not an ocean ship. What right. does that mean? It it traveled between like places uh, along the coast, but it wasn't ever uh, and never and it had never gone into the open sea. Oh my god! And they took it out to the open sea. Yeah, across <laughs> across the one of the biggest like bodies of water and. Yeah, probably like the like the biggest. <laughs> they said get fucked. <laughs> Here's the smallest ship that's not even meant to take to the ocean to travel to to the new land. I mean, it wasn't the smallest ship around, um, mm-hmm. but we have 20, 80, and then 180 tons. 20. No, so, so 20 probably would be way, way too small, I imagine. You said small, you kind of tricked me. Yeah. Food. No, so they, they carried... I don't know how many people we're looking at. 102 people. Okay. Um. So, it kind of it needed to the actually ships are surprisingly um heavy. So, anyway, it was 180. Um, 100. Oh my. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So it was pretty big. The that, what was a heavy one back in the day? If that was considered one of the smaller ones, I'm sorry to cut you off. So that was considered small. Um, up for a cargo ship, there were ships that would travel between. Um. So look up like sixteen um what twenty was the heaviest or cargo ship in sixteen twenty or sixteen fifty ish, you know, middle sixteen hundred. But um by by nineteen oh one ships 
like uh, cargo ships that would travel the um, ocean mm-hmm. were about 20,000 tons. 20,000 tons? Yeah. So modern ships are like 100,000 tons. Oh, my God. 20 to 100. Yeah. So the modern ships are huge. And... I wonder how many people, I wonder how much it would weigh with all the people and all the equipment in there. Like, they probably definitely had to to push the limit a couple of times, but I don't know. That could also screw you over. Like, if it's too heavy, you could risk sinking. Yeah, well, they actually almost, (laughs) they almost (laughs) didn't make it. (laughs) Um, We'll we'll get into that in a little bit. Okay. Talk about the size and kind of the living situation a tiny bit here. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, but it's yeah, the, it's not the size of the ship, but the motion of the ocean, babe. It's a, it was a crazy, um, crazy voyage. Mm. Um, Ooh, bless you, darling. I have oh, Patty right under here. We got the Patty dog. She's under my sweater, so if I look funky, that's why. Mm. But yeah, so but at about 180 tons, it was considered small. Tons. Wow. Um, it it was um, also it was not in good shape when it when it went out. No. I think it was... <laughs> Couple it, holes here and there. You know, it it was sold for scrap four years after it made it to uh, America. <laughs> so, that's, I mean, that's not too bad. I mean, they probably got a use out of it for the next four years after. Yeah. Maybe. For sure. Um, Short distances, for did, sure, though. <laughs> yeah, along <laughs> I, the coast. <laughs> I wonder how, like, how what kind of wear and tear you would be facing with ships back in the Crazy. day. Crazy. Like, I could imagine you probably have, like, water damage at some point because you're using wood. Wood, dude, and water. And water. There's a lot of, like, corals, like, sea life that can accumulate under there. Um, And you didn't have people going down there and cleaning it like you do nowadays. Right. Like, they did not want to get in the water back in the day. No wonder they were so stinky. Right. But, um... Also, salt water, like, really, like, messes with... Like the big old masts. They had a right. problem with the mast. So, I wonder if that also... Do you think that they were able to carry more because the water was saltier? Doesn't that make it more like to change the, the buoyancy somehow? It affects buoyancy for okay. sure. It you there also, There's also a limit to how much like a ship can be submerged and right. still have it be safe. I don't know... Mm-hmm. I mean, they build the the bigger you build a ship, you know, you're gonna build it to be in salt water if it's like huge, you know. So right. you're gonna have to naturally just kind of account for it being in salt water anyway. I could. I wonder what kind of if they had to if ships that you would use in fresh water are a little bit different. Like if you would have to use lighter material, possibly just because it's different buoyancy Maybe. sorry i just have a bunch of questions now yeah i'm getting all into this boat information i don't know if it affects it like too much i'm mm-hmm. sure i'm sure it definitely has it plays a role and plays a um factor in your buoyancy but I, I feel like with normal conditions it's not going to change you know too much it right. probably it probably changes um you know your maximum thresholds or mm-hmm. whatever but just that normal operations it's probably just no big deal right because sometimes you would use like canoes back in the day right like back in the day they used to have usually mm-hmm. small long water canoes yeah well yeah for sure hmm. those would be like popular but you wouldn't be able to go across the ocean with a no, canoe no but for like a freshwater lake you could probably get across a lot easier yeah. but i could also imagine you didn't want to build like a whole whole boat Right. To just go across the lake. Well, boats... So, canoes, it's just for, like, one person or two people. Right. So, it's like, you're not... The, you're building boats eventually to transport cargo, mm-hmm. you know, things. All right. So, that's why you kind of need to get bigger and bigger as you go along. Mm-hmm. So. Plus, the, the weight will, like, diminish slowly just because everyone is consuming part of the food. So, it's going to be, like, less as you go. Yeah. You're going to be a little lighter. That's crazy. It's gonna mm-hmm. be a little bit lighter. Mm-hmm. You see it. I mean, damn. And you poop. The all the difference is is in your poop. Yeah, I wonder. <laughs> I kind of wonder how much it weighs with full amount of people who all need to go to the bathroom. I could imagine that could all add up. Yeah. A little bit. <laughs> I mean, you know, poop 
poop weighs a lot. I I don't want to you know think too yeah. much about this, but let's not get into that topic. For sure, yeah. That's... In case someone's listening to this in the morning with their cup of coffee and maybe donut. Oh jeez, yeah. <laughs> Chocolate donut. That's a uh, definitely a possibility. Mm-hmm. Man, morning. that sounds good. If, if Sometimes... this is your morning. I know. Sometimes I fantasize about going to sleep just so I can wake up. Ah, oh, sounds so good. No, it is, honestly. I mean, for coffee reasons, not oh. just not waking up. But I like, know, that sounded kind of concerning at first. You didn't say the coffee part, so I was like, are you okay? <laughs> I, mean, I was just I was just distracted thinking about coffee and donut. Like, ooh, oh, coffee and donuts sounds fantastic. Oh, I haven't bought donuts in a while. Yeah. Might bring some. But I know. I, know, I love that feeling, especially when, you know, you have the next day off. It's the best. It's the best. I love it. Yeah. I wish I had some days off. I got to work tomorrow, so. Oh, you got to work tomorrow? It sucks. It's Saturday. It's Thursday today, I think. It's, fr- it's definitely Friday. It's Friday. It's Where Friday. Am I? Yeah, no. Oh, I'm just thrown off because I had an extra day off at work, so I'm like, what day is it? Yeah, definitely. Mm. But right, guys. I have a little more information about the living situation. Oh yeah, I like I like this part. Um, I, I mean, I, if you like it, I wish I did a little more, <laughs> put a little more info down about it. Um, but the living quarters for 102 passengers. That doesn't include the the crew. No. So there was an extra like 20 to 30 people on the crew. And I can guarantee you that those were like we're the special people. We get a bigger room. Takes up a little extra space. Yeah. They, well, yeah, for sure. Like, the captain had his quarters, and there mm-hmm. was, like, the crew, you know, quarters. Yeah. But, I mean, they have a job, you know? They're working. They're literally... I don't... I mean... I I wonder if they were getting paid. All, there's all kinds of questions that... <laughs> they're like, you get housing. Yeah. I back wonder in the what day that, that situation was, in... was. Yeah. If they had to go back, if the crew was part of it. I just assumed that everyone was part of it all at once but probably oh that's a good point actually i didn't even think if some people didn't even sign up for that and we're just like i'm just here for the check right and they eventually plan to go back to europe hmm. but the the ship did make it I'm, i i can't imagine that it, it ever went back to uh to europe Mm-mm. it eventually supposedly ended up in europe oh um at, as as scrap We'll talk about um, that, you know, but back to the mainland. Yeah. So it was 102 people was the passengers. The living area was about 80 feet by 20 feet. So how big would that be? Six, like visually? 1,600 square feet. I'm trying to, I'm trying to even think about how big that is. 1,600 square feet. So our apartment is like 1,000. Mm-hmm. So, oh, so a little bit bigger than that for a hundred and two people. Oh, yeah. So imagine like imagine this apartment and our last apartment combined for a hundred and two people with five foot high ceilings. No, no. So <laughs> that's living space. Dude, that's that's where you're sleeping. I, I can't no. imagine that's like the whole um you know ship. There's probably a deck where you could hang Dude. out, but. And people freaking stunk back in the day. No. So imagine all that musty smell accumulating. I hope people open like a door or something. Because, ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Crazy. Mm-mm. So, man, that must have been awful. Even, yeah, like you were saying, just the smell. But... Imagine bunking with like the worst roommate, but with 120 plus people. <laughs> Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Yeah. Well, in did did some people pass? Because I could imagine some people probably died along the way. Oh, oh, we're probably gonna get into that. There was a storm. Oh, a storm! You say the servant of physician Samuel Fuller died. So he Not was the physician. He was the, no, he was the physician's servant. Oh, so just kind of like oh, the assistant. Guy. Yeah. <laughs> he, <laughs> and he was buried at sea. <laughs> they tossed him off. I like how they were like, he was buried at sea. And then visually, there was just probably them tossing him overboard. Well, they didn't want to, like, live with that. No, definitely. I wouldn't either, but... What do you... I mean... Come on. Tell me at least they threw, like, a couple from some flowers there. 
could imagine they had like rosemary or something back in the day probably throw a little bit of that in there yeah i don't know if there was live plants on the mayflower ship <sighs> probably not and if they were alive probably not for long <laughs> no <laughs> um so someone died but a baby <laughs> was also born oh so regenerated plus one they christened him um so the net, net neutral zero net neutral um they they left with this they left with the 102 they came back with 102 the the baby was named oceanus hopkins they named, they named him after the 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 person that killed um the the other person on the ship <laughs> Wait, so they did the one that murdered the other no, guy? His, his name is Oceanus, and the uh, other guy died in a storm and was buried at sea. Uh-huh. So, like, they named it after Ocean. I just thought it was funny. No, no, Ocean and then Hopkins? His name is Oceanus Hopkins. They Oce- named him after the guy who killed the other guy. That's what I asked, yeah. if it was the guy that killed the other guy. <laughs> I was just joking. They, they, oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. Oh, yeah. So, We're naming it after this dude who killed the other guy. No, 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 no. Oh. The, the baby's name is Oceanus. Right. Ocean. Right. Oceanus. Right. The guy. The guy. The other guy died, just in a in a storm. Right. And How does that correlate then? I was just I was so the joke I was saying that they named him Oceanus. They named him after the ocean. Uh huh. Who the ocean is the guy? Okay. Who killed the other guy, Samuel? so that was uh that's all i was saying oh i'm so sorry it's all good um a little bit of a yeah a little bit of a you know semantical thing there but anyway the there was another person who actually also got seriously injured in a storm but i didn't write his name down his middle name is oceanus as well yeah i mean (laughs) probably but, they should have also named the other the kid Oceanus Overboardus. Oceanus Overboardus. Because they tossed the other guy overboard. <laughs> threw him over. Uh, that was a great last name <laughs> to pass on. Uh, That'd be a great um, story to tell. Dude, imagine. Be like, the, you know what they named me after? <laughs> Sheesh. Um, but anyway, the, the ship almost sank. So like I was oh. mentioning earlier, the during one of these storms, the one of the masts or something you know something or other broke Mm -hmm. but they were able to patch it up and manage to make it all the way so they kind of got to america on duct tape and um uh you know zip ties they they so one of the people had some sort of jack some sort of tool that Mm -hmm. they were going to use to help build houses Mm -hmm. and they they used it to basically repair the the ship okay did that wear it away then? Um, it. I mean, I think everything was fine. Like, they just had it and were able to use it. And, okay. I mean, for the um, the main thing is that they were able to not get stranded at sea. You know, so right? Such a you know a horrifying um, fate for anybody. Mm-hmm. Um. So I have another question. Ooh, question um, time. Oh, that'd be cool. We, we need a soundbite for like a um, little quiz question. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun. Work and on that. And maybe have like a dun 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 mm-hmm. A timer. Put the pressure on. I'll definitely integrate that mm, into, mm. into the future at some point. But we got to start off small. A little here and there. Start I still... We, we just know how to how to make a, a watchable video. Barely, yeah. Barely. So the the first video on YouTube, we have a little bit of um, problems. I might end up trying to re-release it at some point because Mm -hmm. it literally has zero views. So there's you know there's no reason for us not to re-release it, but (laughs) might um, touch up the editing a little bit and try and make it a little more listenable. The video isn't great, so hopefully this is a little more improved. Mm -hmm. We are taking little steps Mm -hmm. and you know trying to get things working to where we eventually want them to be. Mm So, yeah, hopefully, if you're, if you're bearing with us or if you're Thank joining you. us after the fact and, you know, catching up on mm-hmm. all the history, we appreciate history. you and we love you. We love you guys.
Uh, but we're but we're actually no, we're not done. It sounds oh. like an outro. But we I just have one more question. Mm-hmm. Um, or yeah, one more question. No, it's okay. So, what spooky thing happened to the Mayflower <gasps> ship? Ooh, spooky. Okay. After the pilgrims arrived. So they what, saw a ghost. Ooh. What happened to the ship? What What was the ultimate fate of the Mayflower ship? I'm going to go with... Oh. Huh? I have actually... Um, Sorry. I have um, options. Oh. Ooh. Okay. Lay um, it on me. I was just trying to figure out the best wording for that question. Mm-hmm. Um, Should have done that ahead of time. No. Don't worry about but it. But we have option A. It eventually sank. Is at the bottom of the ocean. Right. Option B, it was sold for scrap. Um, option C, it was captured by pirates. Captured by pirates. Yeah? Yes. No. Oh. I don't believe it was ever captured by pirates. Lucky. It was a thing back in the day, I think. Right. Pretty, pretty horrifying. Mm-hmm. Actually, we talked about some torture method for pirates if i'm not mistaken yes you hauling you hauling um but brutal man the ultimate fate of the mayflower actually remains unknown it is speculated though um some some historians argue that it was scrapped for its timber and used to construct a barn in jordan's england okay well that's oddly specific yeah yeah it's in england yeah so it's kind of it's weird and specific they're and like we don't i'm sorry I'm like we don't know where the ship ended up in but we think it's this one specific barn in this one area yeah i have a picture of it <gasps> oh. oh so i'll link to a, a picture maybe i can throw it up uh, i'm still kind of working on the visual elements and maybe hopefully one of these days i'll be able to throw that up in the edit um but in england in 1957, a replica of the original ship was built in England and sailed to Massachusetts in 53 days. So they did like a replica test run in 1957, mm-hmm. made it in 53 days. So on November 9th, 1620, they got there August August to November. That's at least uh, two months. So at least 60 days for the original pilgrims and when these people redid the thing they made it there in 53 days hmm. so in modern times maybe cut a shave a few days off there mm-hmm. but anyway uh i'm gonna bring up this picture just to you know check a look at it uh show my baby here uh that's what the barn supposedly looks like oh my god just a classic like that's you know, a sick ass barn england style barn if you're if you want to look it up it's just a google um mayflower barn or um you know click the link in the description you know um if you're watching video maybe we can throw it up why do they think that <laughs> i don't know huh but that's, that's the one a spooky look do you think it could be haunted yeah Dude. So that's why i said spooky but i don't know it's the i only said spooky because it's it's unknown specifically what happens but or what happened to it but yeah it could be uh, I could possess the soul of that guy, um, Samuel, who who died. <laughs> I could also imagine that, um, you know, you could, I, I think you could probably, like, study the, the wood used to build it and yeah. kind of see what kind of corrosion and damage it's had throughout the years. It's um, crazy that it was, like, good enough to build, to rebuild a, a barn with. I know, that's what I'm thinking. I wonder if they just kind of shaved off that damage area, but sometimes if the wood is like, has a cut in it anywhere that could leak it to the center, then that's when it starts becoming a problem, I think, because then it starts kind of rotting from the inside. Right, if there's rot. Exactly. Interesting. Whale. Hmm. Yeah. Literally, whale, whale, whale. Whale, whale, whale. <laughs> Uh, huh. right. So in November, on November 19th, 1620, they sighted present day Cape Cod. They spent days trying to sail south to Virginia, but were forced to stay in Cape, in Cape Cod, which is modern day Princetown Harbor. Ooh, Princetown. So if you're in Massachusetts in the Princetown Harbor area, um, or also like in the Martha's Vineyard area, mm. those are kind of 
basically the the areas that they would, were at. right so that was those were the first american settlements uh english settlements in america i want to go to one of those types of museums so bad where it's like just historical just a bunch of historical artifacts from from how they did it like settlements tools clothing like all that stuff is so interesting it'd be really cool if we could go yeah Mm -hmm. um i think it's see so i when when you were saying um about the museums i was kind of getting distracted because it sounds a little bit boring but what i would (laughs) um what i would really like is is kind of going to a museum with all kinds of historical stuff but having like someone kind of telling stories about stuff and like yes like with there, a guide yeah like there was a story I, um when i was a kid i went to sutter's fort i believe Ooh. and we we um followed along the kind of impersonator peoples there and they mm-hmm. were living so like kind of immersed in the colonial life or not it was like um that's so fun what do you call it the people who pilgrim i don't know no pioneers pioneers the people who went across america so those were the people in America who went from the East Coast to the West. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Um, and that's kind of about the time. Sutter's Fort is in uh, um, California here in mm-hmm. Sacramento. And, and it was about, it. it is, um, the historical significance is that it was um, kind of around during the time of the gold rush, 1849-ish, 49ers. Have we ever been? No, I don't think so. I mean, I don't well, think maybe, I've ever been to Sutter's think, Fort. I'm going to look into that right now because I might, you know, be thinking of something else. But uh, Sutter Health, you know, the, Sutter Health, yeah. I believe that, you know, comes from Sutter, uh, Sutter's Fort, California State Parks, Midtown Sacramento. They, I, I wonder if they have um, like guided kind of interactive tours like Still. we did yeah like I, I did it as a field trip so i think that would be super Ooh. cool to do something like that mm-hmm. just with like a guide yeah that'd be so fun they shot off a cannon <gasps> oh my god was it loud yeah it was super loud they, they shot off a foam ball so no, like nothing got hit too heavy but it was just um <sighs> yeah dude imagine hearing like a cannon ball just fall or like hit dirt just boom yeah, yeah, that'd be crazy. Oof. Or to feel it, like... Poof. I know. That'd be crazy. Yeah. But this is kind of what it looks like. It was just basically, like... It was a really cool time with the wagon and everything. Let's have a sword fight there. Ooh. Ooh, sorry. Yeah. Sword fight? They, no, yeah, they <laughs> had... I mean, they had swords. They also had um, muskets or whatever. Um, Ooh. Some... Come on, children. Get a gun. Get a musket. Right. Some kind of... Um, a weapon. Firearm. Mm-hmm typical uh on november six, on november 19th 1620 they decided president day cape cod they spent days trying to sail south to virginia but were forced to stay in cape cod modern day princetown harbor so yeah they were trying they were trying to go to virginia but they sailed a little bit too far north and eventually set up their own settlement in massachusetts hmm. the an interesting thing about the mayflower specifically Mm-hmm. is that when they arrived in America, I believe it was after they arrived in America, they created um, a document, Ooh. which w- is kind of historically one of the kind of like the the grandfather of the American Constitution. Oh, they're like, <laughs> settle down, guys. Please chill out. No murder. Right. On the premises. Uh Unless it is uh, to steal their belongings. <laughs> right. <laughs> and if they don't look white like us. <laughs> right. Um, let me see what I have about the information here. Mayflower Compact. So it was originally titled The Agreement Between the Settlers of New Plymouth. So it was after they arrived. Mm-hmm. The New Plymouth was the the settlement that they established. They created the document, which we now refer to as the Mayflower Compact. So, Compacted. Pretty super historical kind of document. It was the first governing document of Plymouth Colony. 
was written by male passengers of the Mayflower. Of course. Male passengers. Thank you for adding that in. Of course. Um, I wonder if they have this document like for the public to you, see. Th- I, I believe that the original doesn't exist. Like the the original original. But there's three copies of, of um, kind of basically transcribed versions um, from people who were there. I wonder what happened to the original. Right. And if they do still have it, because if... Well, I got tossed out. Oh, that would suck. <laughs> if it, I feel like the main thing that could happen to it is like de- um, like it degrading over time, the quality, the paper. Yeah. And everything. But um, at the same time, I kind of wish that they had it for the public to see or just kind of like a form of document because now I just kind of feel like they're writing whatever and being like, this is what it said, guys. You know? Right. There's, I don't know if there's um, anything of the original, but there is like versions of it which are historical, like, you know, this. Mm -hmm. But how do we know that they're historically accurate? That's true. Not, Not to like burst anyone's bubble i'm sure there's like recordings of it over time but i could imagine it probably gets lost in translation a couple of times right for it to not be the original exactly but i mean that looks pretty accurate <laughs> the concept of just and equal laws for the general good was embodied in the document which was signed on board the Mayflower mm. shortly after it arrived in Provincetown at the tip of Cape Cod. You know, it actually makes sense now. They didn't even know what the hell happened to their ship, so how would they know what happened to the document? Right, exactly. It's like actually asking someone where the keys are when they don't even know where the freaking car is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, it probably wasn't... It was, there was, they weren't any better back then Mm-mm. about keeping track of things. It makes me feel a little bit better about myself. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. So um, I'm, I just kind of Googled Mayflower here because um, I didn't quite fill in all my info here. But it, it says an argument broke out among the 102 passengers. <laughs> I could imagine. When the Mayflower dropped anchor. Several of the pilgrims on board argued that since the Cape Cod area was outside their intended destination... Land controlled by the king. Uh, English laws did not apply. So they are basically saying, we didn't arrive in Virginia. Oh. This isn't um, a European colony. We don't have to follow English laws. We could do what we want now, guys. Right. Set up any rules. So there was kind of a little bit of anarchy happening. And um, some of the leaders of um, the pilgrims wanted to kind of establish order. Mm-hmm. and Smart guy. Right. So they created their own um, jurisdiction, Mm -hmm. so to speak. The pilgrim leaders thus drafted the Mayflower Compact compact to establish basic order in their new land. The document was a formed attempt to establish a legally binding self-governing body. Mm. A century later, uh, another group of men were united by self-evident truths that all men are created equal, and they wrote a document began with the words, We the people. All men are created equal. Right. Women, however. <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of like kind of like the same thing. Uh, the, we the people uh, believe yeah the constitution. So, mm. um, but it's also kind of nice because that was like the first kind of step into the constitution, like the first set of, of basic human rights. Right. Well, it yeah. Just well, just establishing order, just so people right. didn't like you know kill and you know right. steal and. Basic human rights, like don't kill each other, um, don't steal people's well, like products. I think. They, they, yeah, I'm sure they were they were a little bit behind on human rights, but they did right. have you know basic, basic, very basic, pretty basic. But uh, you know, it, you got to start somewhere. Start somewhere for sure, mm-hmm. and it definitely was. It was starting somewhere. Um, we're here now, you know. We could get a little better, but I think we're at a good point. We're getting better. Barely nothing. Do I sound like I'm too close to this? I don't think so. Mm. I think the the closer you get is is kind of better. The the, the difficult thing is is if um, I think the levels are a little bit you know all over the place right now because I'm kind of like talking right. uh, a little if you bit. You guys are wearing headphones then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're hey, we're guys. working on the um, audio mixing and 
how to you know properly adjust our gain and everything mm-hmm. just to make everything sound great plus our podcast etiquette just kind of like talking yeah. into the microphone because like you would think it's not hard to just sit here and talk but you gotta like talk into the microphone like if you're like looking over you gotta make sure you kind of talk over the microphone too and not just that like all the sound around you is is like gonna f- Ooh. see see the sound around you is gonna disturb <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm happy you guys heard that though. That was Patty. You're the cutie. She's in my, under my sweater. I love her. She's not, oh, oh, bless you. I love that dog. <laughs> the other one's sleeping over there. Man, we got to do um, just kind of a casual podcast to update people on our on our lives. Yeah, if you guys want to hear that, that'd be super sick. We don't, I mean, I don't give. A, I don't care what people want to hear. <laughs> no, I do. For us. I, yeah, I mostly just want to be able to just do stuff with you and your thumb if you guys want to join us it'll be wholesome it'll be fun we'll have these babes our kiddos we'll need a name for it Mm -hmm. it'll be fun it'll be a good time guys come join us for now we're we're gonna just keep it with top topical uh, Topical. topics uh going with the and not the kind you put on your skin kind of like the what we put on your skin you put it in your brain put it in your brain because it's information Mm-mm. My phone's about to vibrate because we have to feed the dogs. Boop, 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 boop. Turn off for today. Mm-mm, okay. Mm-mm. Anyway, okay. this was the first kind of there document. There was a, a kid's shirt for that. What? For the uh, the Mayflower Constitution. Mayflower or Compact? The Mayflower Compact, sorry. <clears throat> there was a kid's shirt on sale for that. And it basically just had the Mayflower Compact on the kid's shirt <laughs> mm. no kid would be happy imagine giving that to a kid for christmas yeah was it on sale no it was up there <laughs> i mean maybe if it was oh. on sale but you would make the kid happy here oh geez yeah. look at that kid i didn't <laughs> he's I didn't hurting inside <laughs> kids mayflower compact <laughs> that's a great picture kid I, size yeah no we we um i have to get the the author video switcher in here maybe I'll, I'll try and set it up for next time so just do it myself mm-hmm. here on the freaking um to show the screen command station yeah oh that'd be so sick i can i have an hdmi out so i basically mm-hmm. just hook it up to the video switcher i can press i have to, i would have to do it manually here mm-hmm. but it's an option mm-hmm. um That's super cool. it would be a little bit clunky without um someone behind the scenes switching i could do it I think. Well, we're both talking to each other. That's the right. problem. So it's like, it's hard to do it when you're actually engaging and, and trying to, you know, be present. Yeah, we could try that. It, it would just be hard. I, Give yeah. it a shot. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll try it. It'll be a little clunky. Yeah. Um, we man. have to have faith and beauty. They were still um, faithful to England at the time. Mm. They weren't allowed to practice their faith in England, but... They kind of still wanted to be on the good side of the king so that if they sent people over, they weren't just going to get entirely annihilated. Mm-hmm. So they were kind of in the, in the, um, in the, uh, what's it called? The uh, Mayflower Compact, they had uh, written that they were still kind of noble to the king. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know what this is. I don't know if this is the whole freaking thing but Mm -hmm. it's i'll I'll start reading it it's i kind of copied and pasted a lot of this but that's what i did yeah i'll start reading it um just to kind of give give the general idea okay we'll get into it can you do it in like a a old-timey voice an old-timey voice Ooh, gandalf yeah that's more gandalf i like it though um in the name of god amen (laughs) We, we, we whose names are underwritten, the loyal subjects of our dread sovereign Lord King James by the grace of God of oh Great God. Britain, France, and Ireland, King, defender of the faith, having undertaken for the glory of God and advancement of the Christian faith and honor of our king and country, a voyage to plant the first colony in the northern parts of Virginia northern parts of virginia so that's basically what they called it 
it is we're referring to it as Northern Virginia. Um, do by these presents solemnly and mutually in the presence of God and one another covenant and combine ourselves together into a civil politic, a civil body politic for our better ordering and preservation and furtherance of the ends aforesaid and by virtue hereof do enact constitute frame and just equal laws ordinances act constitutions offices from the time to time and as shall be thought to meet and convenient for the general good of the colony unto which we promise to do all submission and obedience oh my, that is long just, and like way too detailed i just kept reading just because the sentence was crazy um can I try? To read this one sentence? That's one whole sentence. Well, kind of. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm, I'm even having trouble kind of d- differentiating where it, it starts and ends because there's different punctuation. This oh is my God. A and C, which I believe to be like, etc. We whose names are are like underwritten. So like written <laughs> under here. <laughs> Are like under uh, in. <laughs> <laughs> we, we whose names are like <laughs> under in the loyal subjects of our dread sovereign Lord King James. I'm trying to California, it, California, it, and like abbreviate it. Um, of our dread sovereign Lord King. So this guy sucks. Dread sovereign. So he dreadful man. No, they followed him to death but by the grace of god our great britain france and ireland king wait so who are these guys loyal to (laughs) defender of the faith okay and having undertaken for the glory of god and advancement of the christian faith and the honor of our king and country a voyage to plant the first colony in the northern parts of virginia do by these presents solemnly and mutually in the oh my god this guy's like, we have many witnesses. Uh, we got all these people and God and one another again, covenant and combine ourselves together into a civil body politic. I can guarantee you all those, the civil, civil body politic was just a bunch of dudes. Yeah. Sausage party. All dudes. Mm-hmm. You're like, we know what's best. Yeah. For our better ordering and preservation and furtherance of... Of the ends aforesaid. Uh, and virtue hereof do enact. Constitute and frame such... Well, they didn't fucking frame it because they lost the damn thing. <laughs> such just and equal laws, ordinances, acts, constitutions, and offices from time to time. <laughs> from time to time. As well as shall be thought most meet and covenant of the general good of the colony. So they're like, we're going to group up guys, talk about the general good of the colony, and then make some choices. So like City Hall, unto which which we promise all due submissions and obedience. Okay. So basically this general good of the colony, they were interested. General good of the colony, we promise all due submission and obedience. We're going to... Um, you know, do our Follow best. Follow this faith to the death. Right. And we're 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 just mostly trying to look out for the the best interest of everybody. Mm. For the most part. Kinda I kinda like that though. It's kinda nice. It's pretty vague in general, but it's definitely a good framework. Yeah, it gives me the feeling of like you gotta meet that word count. But you're just kind of throwing in words. You're like, <laughs> all the people here in the presence of God as well, in the presence of everyone else as well. And by virtue <laughs> hereof, do an act. <laughs> We're like, come on, guys, we want to meet the quota. <laughs> do an act, constitute, and frame such just and equal laws, ordinances, acts, constitutions, and offices from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> as well as what we thought to meet convenient and the general guard of quality <laughs> unto which <laughs> for my goodness they're like jerry it has to have at least 20 30 words in order to, for it to be a, a constitution <laughs> come on we need to <laughs> put in more words our teacher asked for 500 words they're it's sitting like, there counting each one 
And then that one guy in the back, like, we have to write something? Oh, jeez. I know. <laughs> the that one was guy me. in the back. That was always me. I'm like, the teacher's like, all right, kids, start pulling out your homework assignments. And I start, like, turning around, like, what? Everyone knew about this oh, but me? God. That's the worst feeling. I was always the person who never did the homework. Oh, my God. Huh. You and me both. Right. Well. <laughs> we're here now, guys, teaching history. Home, home here now. <laughs> now we're teaching you guys. We're, yeah. We're, so, yeah. Have the faith people, in us. History was never my subject either. Like, yeah. I, I, I enjoyed learning about history, but mm-hmm. I always was horrible when it came to... Um, uh, my Remembering grades. things too. Right. I, I mean, I, I'm all right with with my memory, but I suck at memorizing. I just never did homework, and mm-hmm. history homework was such like a drag. Just reading, answering like you know short questions is oh, so much reading. You had to read this whole chapter by the next day and like write these write these answers. I always hated it when like you would read the whole chapter and then answer some of them, and then you can't find that one where it's like. Where in the textbook does it say that uh, this ship like sank? And you're literally going through it the whole time, and then you notice that there's like a picture, and it kind of says on the corner like, "This is ooh, this is like where it sank back in like," and it's like these tiny little subtitles. Yeah. Like, what the hell? How am I supposed to see that? I, I hated those specific <sighs> questions. I hate like the those que- like. The questions, history, hmm. the worst. And I had, I had horrible teachers too, so that didn't help. Yeah. I just like, I wish it was interesting because there's some like interesting parts of history. I hate that they make it like back in the day they had their shit together. They were literally going places and like discovering new land, doing all this. You said they had their shit together? Basically, that's kind of what, if, what it sounded like to me, but... Once I started hearing about how well, back in the day they were literally just the same as us, but worse because they didn't have as many rules. Well, <laughs> so I'm why, like, wow, this is great. Think about the people who, who leave for Mars mm-hmm. right now. You know, like, why would you leave your life here? So that's actually completely like different um, analogy because the people who go to Mars are doing it for like scientific mm-hmm. um, reasons and kind of more of a noble reason. But people who left for America, it was their last um right it's a last resort Mm -hmm. like their lives were not going good in in england so they were like let's let's try something let's Let's, figure something out here let's get the crappiest ship (laughs) right 450 of the 500 people died in jamestown so like 450 of 500 yeah that's 90 percent like 50 people survived yeah and they whatever they they did fine they went to a different colony or something and they ate the other guys (gasps) <gasps> they ate them no probably though i could imagine desperate times calls for desperate measures for desperate measures um they could use the gridiron from the last episode to <laughs> that's about the right time to help grill them i mean that that's that's classic technology you know just throw someone over a fire mm-hmm. you got yourself a some some slow torture slow torture and crispiness jeez all in one anyways all right um almost done here um kind of coming up to the end of my research and we're at about an hour and 20 so having a blast having a blast Mm -hmm. doing pretty good on time i might Mm -hmm. i'm thinking about just touching up the the rest of this episode Mm -hmm. this year and not waiting you know a whole year to get into the the rest of of um thanksgiving i'd like to do topical or um i'd like to do special episodes here and there yeah events based on like holidays or Mm -hmm. whatever here and there but i'll be super sick i don't think it'll be as relevant next year and Mm -hmm. uh, and in the future i'd like to maybe fine-tune things a little bit Mm -hmm. and it might not even be the same format so we're just gonna things out yeah we'll figure it out but as we as we draw um closer to the end here just gonna throw in a little bit more info Mm -hmm. they drew up so this um what i have written says they drew up a form of government which has been designated as the first real constitution of modern times so it was very historic Mm -hmm. it was a democratic acknowledgement of liberty under law and order and order Mm -hmm. and the giving 
to each person the right to participate in government while they promise to be obedient to the laws. What about women? As long as you were a man. Ah, and there white. it is. <laughs> right. Like anyone can join. Only white men, though, and no woman. Please, thank you. Exactly. So that they 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 could basically create the perfect world. And what's think crazy about it. is like any psycho man could join. You know, and be like, <laughs> any, fuck these women. Any white man. Any white man. As yep. long as you're like, oh, I care about the well-being of the community. Right. Guys. <laughs> well, I mean, that's um, you know, classic. Hmm. Um, you know, Eurocentric uh, governments and, and whatnot. Yeah. I mean, you had to survive somehow. And I could imagine a lot of these guys were like jumping at the opportunity to become like public, well known figures, you know, back in the day. Right. Crazy times. Crazy times. Mm. Anyway. I wonder if they could look at how it is now, if they would be like, oh my God, no way. We all died back in the day. <laughs> People, people, people were dying. Mm -hmm. People be dying, baby. Mm -hmm. They do? Yeah. When? <laughs> For always and forever. The one thing guaranteed in life. Yes. And there, taxes. If you're um, in this world and you want a book to read, um, I can't recommend it enough to, to, you know, everybody. It's called staring at the sun it's about you know worrying about death so if uh if uh, you are if i do if, if we did kind of take it there a little bit too far but uh there's uh something to help you out and help me out for sure so it's a great book it's on uh, it's on audible if you want to listen to it uh we are not sponsored but we'd like to be mm -hmm. oh yeah so the the last bit of info that i have here kind of is going to tie into the origins of the actual thanksgiving day uh the first winter of 1620 was very harsh and unexpected frozen soil new storms mm. uh, sorry snowstorms would make the countryside I impassable without s snowshoes so heavy snows you know you couldn't even uh, walk anywhere if you didn't have the proper shoes uh it was very cold how far north they were oh my god um in their haste to leave they didn't think to bring fishing rods no so dude they they pretty much would not have made it if it wasn't for the indians they would have been gone they they couldn't fish the the um it was winter, so the, um, you know, a lot of the wildlife was, you know, in hibernation, mm. not really going out to eat as much. They're the longest survivors of living in the wilderness, basically. Like, they know the ways of everything. Yeah, so yeah, the natives, they, they, there was, they were greeted by some nice natives and some people that had already spoken English. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so like 13 years earlier in Jamestown, mm -hmm. 1907, they didn't have as much luck because they were dealing with, you know, people that weren't as welcoming. Um, but, you know, 10, 15 years into the future, mm -hmm. there's a little bit more communication between natives and right. uh, the colonists. I'm just scared that they're going to screw them over. The, the natives. The natives are gonna get screwed over. They they do. Yeah. The um what I heard is, in my American history class, that the natives definitely would have won. Yes. Like by by a mile, if it wasn't for disease, because the new diseases, um from, the European surviving, you know, black plague and all kinds of other, um you know pandemics shitting on the boat <laughs> yeah so they they brought with them a bunch of disease and unfortunately pretty much decimated a lot of the native population unbeknownst to the uh colonists mm -hmm. they just kind of brought it along happened is what it is on fleas Sucks. on rats yeah you know it just it spreads 
Also, yeah. Pepper's asleep right now, but her little her tongue is sticking out. It's really cute. Oh, she's adorable. I love the Pepper. They're so cute. I chose I chose this one. Patty. Paola chose Pepper. Mm-hmm. They told us that we could take two. Yeah. And I already knew which one I wanted. Yeah, I I I knew which one I wanted to. My patty here looks pretty much um, identical. Pretty much identical to her dad, which was 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 a doggie that I grew up with for a few years. Mm-hmm. So, it was the fourth generation of his childhood dogs. Fourth generation. We're probably not gonna breed them again though, because they have a little bit of health problems, and we just don't want to have to deal with that for them mm. or for any future generations we'd mm. rather um adopt yeah adopt um foster dogs i'm personally interested in getting a medium-sized dog like a border collie it sounds mm. pretty cool there's so many kinds of dogs i want i want a corgi i want a wiener dog a wiener schnitzel i want a pomeranian those guys are really cute i want a dog like the downstairs neighbor he has like this dog that looks like a freaking teddy bear. Fluffy He's so as fluffy. heck. Oh my gosh. Super like strong oh. shoulders and like a big old fluff ball head. He's so cute. He lo- <laughs> he looks like a little doll. Yeah. I love him. Also a border collie, like you said. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's one of my a lab goals. Dalmatian. Oh. Yeah. <sighs> I love dogs. But um, all right back to it <laughs> they should have brought a couple of cats on the ship man that would have solved their mice problem <laughs> they I mean, they might have hmm. um i actually don't have too much information information about what type of animals they brought with them um i've gone through all the stuff i have mm-hmm. um for the next installment i'm gonna give a little bit more info on things i missed and tie in the the mayflower pilgrims mayflower settlers with the history of uh the first thanksgiving basically Uh, this is going to be coming out in december so a little bit after thanksgiving but we're it's one of my favorite holidays Mm -hmm. so i wanted to give a little love to kind of um history it made me think of the pilgrim and indian um like uh propaganda that they would teach you like in first grade you know and you'd mm-hmm. you'd make a pilgrim hat with a little buckle on it and you'd make like a, a little hand turkey and uh talk about the first thanksgiving and whatever it kind of makes me sad now like looking back at all of that like it's really fun but at the same time they they brought a lot of like death and and sadness with them yeah well they also we we wouldn't be here right you know, without it absolutely Euro- so, european settling of uh, america has brought us wish it could have gone a little bit better but uh thank you guys and hope we can all prosper right um they taught they taught us a song about killing turkeys <laughs> no i've ever so- t- sang it to you i think a couple of times but would you like to sing it to all of us? Yeah. Yay. Okay. They, in, in first grade, they taught us a song. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, we were we were turkeys. <laughs> I don't know if I performed it or if they were performing it, but we would sing a song. I went, gobble, 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 fat turkeys, fat turkeys. <laughs> gobble, 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 fat turkeys are we. We're not here for a living. We're here for Thanksgiving. Gobble, 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 fat turkeys are we. <laughs> That's all I remember. I think I remember your mom telling me about you singing that too. Yeah? I think, maybe. Hmm. I don't remember. I don't remember um, uh, any, about, any of that. I would like to uh, maybe dig into the backstory of why we were singing about, you know, killing turkeys. I don't think <laughs> that would be cool to sing today. No. But, um, you know, there you have it. Thank you, guys. Um, yeah, thank you for joining us. Mm-hmm. We... Um, that's all I have. So that's all we're going to be going with for this episode. File, find us on social media at Half History Pod on Twitter. Half History. Half History on everywhere else. Um, you know, be on the lookout for us and get us anywhere you get podcasts. Mm-hmm. Find us on YouTube. And yeah, we'll catch you later. Love you guys. Love you. Bye. Bye.
Hope you had a good Thanksgiving. 